Good Wednesday morning to everyone in the Red Dirt Diocese, the rest of the flyover states, and beyond that, you know, the civilized world. I uh, have been hearing a lot of buzz lately about Omega, sorry, Omega Constellation Pipan Dials. And it's one of those things, you know, if I hear some one person talking about it, I think they've just got a fixation or just a crush of some sort. But if I hear two or three or four, and generally, by the time something starts catching on here in the flyover states, it's almost too late. One of the nice things about being on YouTube and living here, it's kind of like the Netflix special in the... In the um, Stephen King novel, 11-22-63, except I live in 1963, I get to go to the future, then go back and take advantage, sometimes. And after hearing so many people talk about these Pipan dials, like they're Pokemon, you know, got to catch them all or get them before they're too late, I started experiencing a little FOMO, so or fear of missing out. And uh, the yeah, you know, the reason why Archie calls me the rancher is that we had a conversation right before the big blow up with the other watch channel the appearance, which to me was still no big deal. But uh, I happened to make a observation to him that it seems like a lot of people in the watch community are simply following the herd. And him, like other people that are established in YouTube, have the opportunity to shape opinion. And I just remarked, I think I would, you know, I think I'd rather be the rancher than the livestock. And he didn't let me live that down for a while, but I still kind of stand by it. But nonetheless, this herd mentality, this groupthink, which I think pervades a lot of the watch community, I still fall victim to it. So there I was last night with my looking over a couple of things looking over a buy it now option on an Omega Constellation Pie Pan. It's getting ready to click the, oh, by the way, uh, inst, you know, a turnomatic watch early 60s, automatic movement. Original dial, but it's not really worth saying, I'm, it's not really worth a patina chat, sorry. It's just not. Anyway, it's getting ready to click it, and the thought of the knowledge gap occurred to me. And the knowledge gap is, you know, when people meet on a transaction, generally one person, if one person or party knows more about the subject matter than the other one, they're in a good position to take advantage of it. And this happens all the time. Every time you walk, every time you walk into a jeweler, chances are, uh, used retailer, chances are that jeweler knows more about, you, about the subject matter than you do because it's their full-time job. They also probably get missive you know, directives from the company and so forth and so on. But it also can happen in private party sales as well, you know, not just new and used jewelers. As a matter of fact, um, Uber Oki was talking, and he was discussing a Weiler diver. And he said, man, I love brands like these. And he said, because the people that sell them often have no idea who they are, and the people that are looking for them exactly know what they are. So, in which case, when he's dealing with people, it's like, hey, I went through, you know, went through my dad's stuff, and here's a bunch of old watches. There's very much the knowledge gap. And that caused me to hesitate on clicking the Buy It Now button because, you know, I did a quick analysis, and how much do I know about Omega Constellation Pipe Pan Dials? Not much. How much does that guy know? Probably a lot more than I do. How good a position is he to take advantage of me? Well, let's be honest, it's pretty good. Now, ultimately, I decided not to go through with it. Because, you know, I started looking through and started doing the research. You know, whenever you, whenever you come to a, uh, a purchase or a sale, do your homework, do your homework, do your homework. Bring a, Do your homework and bring a loop. Or occasionally eBay. Blow up, get a good picture. Or Craigslist. 
And I was kind of going through a, there's, I mean, you know, I'm vaguely aware of the constellation Connie Pipan, yeah. There's actually a lot of stuff out there about it. And going through and realizing all the myriad amounts of fuckery that often goes on with the cells of these items, I decided not to go through with it. So I guess you could say my laziness overcame my FOMOs. Now, what's, you know, sometimes, sometimes hesitation or um, can be fatal, and sometimes it's a godsend. And, and the, the reason why is, yeah, does it have a rich history? The, the Pipan, yeah, the Connie does. Uh, are, they, are they neat? Yeah, they really, really are. Do I think they're especially cool? No, no, I, I don't. I think they're, you know. But to me, it's maybe a little bit neater than the uh, Eternomatic, but not a whole lot. Not enough to spend, you know, ridiculous amounts of money on. Not hundreds and hundreds or thousands of dollars. So, um, yeah. Fortunately for once, I got talk, um, I've got talked myself out of my FOMOs. Usually it takes a pontifical directive. You know, and again, it's the herd mentality or FOMOs. Everyone likes to rag on who dink you Chris. Oh, uh, actually, here's one other trick about Christian. I hate to almost hate to say this, but we kind of discovered something. Take a watch that Kristen is showing for hun multiple hundreds or thousands of dollars and why it's cool and go directly to eBay or to Craigslist and look for something else and get it for much, much less. Do I feel kind of bad saying that? A little bit, but on the other hand, he's not really returning my phone call, so screw him. Be that as it may, um, a couple of things I have learned on eBay is, oh, oh, let me get, I'll get back to that. Um, but something else, uh, Christian Harris, and I got distracted myself there. Christian Harris and Houdinki, everyone likes to bemoan the, bemoan the uh, Houdinki effect, but that's the fault of, that's our fault, is the way I see it. Those watches were always out there, and they were always cool. They were not, you know, Universal Genève was not any less cool or any less desirable or had less merits before Hodinkee and these other online folks probably went da 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 started talking about them. If that's the reason why they weren't capitalized on earlier is the herd mentality of much of the watch, watch buying community. Um, well, in ignorance. Quite frankly. That said, you know, if there's a vintage piece out there, if you like it, and if you think it's cool, and if you've got someone nearby that can work on it, you think it's a fair price, go for it. Again, um, be the rancher, don't follow the herd. Anyway, eBay. There is a couple of things you could do, which I found, which I've actually used before with, you know, with the vintage razors. Number one, pit something on your local Craigslist or Guntree or whatever the hell it is, or offer up, and just say, I'm looking for old watches. Want, you know, kind of want to buy add up, and just say specifically what you're looking at. Just make it nice, and I'm looking for old watches. I'm a collector, I'm not a, not a reseller, and uh, I just think they're neat and cool. If you have something you want me to look at, you know, text me or call me or email me. Now the, you know, so a lot of times people that bring stuff in have no idea really what they are. It's just like, well, here's this box of grandpa stuff, and it's taking up space in the closet or in the bathroom, so why not get rid of it? The same thing also applies to eBay. If there is, if you look for const, something like Constellation Reference 190.02 Pi Pan Dial, you're going to get references where people know exactly what those are. You're going to run across people making listings that probably know more about that reference and that model than you do. 
a good thing to do is to do the opposite, is look for the most vague and general listings you can. Um, for instance, there is a Gillette Big Boy Razor. It's, they only made it for a year and a half, and they're, they made them in chromium and uh, gold-plated, and they're very rare. <coughs> now, if I look for a Gillette Big Boy Razor, they're expensive. <coughs> but if I use very general instead of specific search terms, every once in a while you come across something. Someone that just says old, old vintage razor. Or old, old, old Gillette razor. Someone that's just trying to, you know, can't be bothered to take the time, look it up and research it, or doesn't know remotely what it is. There is a, there's always a knowledge gap on eBay, and you might as well be taking advantage of it, instead of the one being taken advantage of. Now, and there's one other point about eBay. Darn. Um, as always, do the homework, look up the reference, find out everything you can about it. And if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Oh, uh, by the way, with the Constellation, it looked like it, the dial had been touched up, which is the bane of my existence lately. So that's one of the downsides of vintage. But um, they're out there. You know, you can either, they're out there, the deals are. You just have to invest, you know, you, you can either invest time or money. And I found out the more time you invest, the less money it costs. So, hope everyone out there has a great hump day and try to be good to each other. Oh, and even though I say that I'm the one with the answer, uh, with the questions rather than the answers, if I got anything wrong, or if there's something I overlooked, let me know. Thanks. And let's see what uh, comes up to offer on Basil World.